here in the Niner locker room with Mike McGlinchey and um, obviously great win against the Rams. You guys seemingly have their number. Nobody seems like does a, as good a job as you guys seem to do against their D-line and against Donald. There is no secret. I know you guys are going to play him again, but what can you t what can you share with us? I mean, what, why does the plan seem to work against Donald? He always seems like he's neutralized to some degree. Um, well, I think it starts with our coaching staff. I think they do a great job preparing us. They do a great job game planning this whole thing into where they can't get tips of where we're going and how we plan on blocking their front. Um, and I think we've had a lot of great players here over the years that have taken advantage of the opportunity to go up against the best in the world. And, um, you know, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun over these last couple of years to watch these guys get challenged and, and especially the two new guys we have or three new guys we have playing inside with Aaron, you know, Spencer and Jake and the challenge that they had stepping up to, to, to block Aaron and, 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 the, and the rest of the gang over there. Um, and they did a great job. And it's a, it's a, it takes all, all of us to, may, to be able to do that. And it takes uh, the ones that aren't, um, you know, on the double teams or sliding to Aaron to, to win their one-on-one -on -one matchups, which, is, which has been huge. I think that's allowed us to do a lot of great things is because where we need to be perfect, we have been. And, um, and, and it's been given us a lot of chances to succeed. You know, nobody, you know, you get to week six or seven or, you know, middle of the season, everybody's hurting. How do you, how, you play a lot of games where you're hurting. So obviously you just got to play through that, right? I mean, I, I saw the first play of the game, first play of the season in Chicago. It seemed like you almost got rolled up on from behind. Um, but I mean, there's plays where it's like, you know, it's like, wow. I mean, you probably got all kinds of maladies going. Playing with pain, is that something as a pro that you just have? You have to adjust to, or uh, is it just part of the you know life in the NFL? I mean, how would you describe the injury factor in trying to go about doing what you do? Yeah, I think it's just an occupational hazard of playing offensive line. Um, I don't, I don't think there's any real secret behind it. But it's not just the pros; you've had to play through pain at every level. Um, you know, if, as long as your legs are moving and your and you can, you know, nothing's falling off your arms, you should be all right. So, um, yeah, it's just. It's just a mindset. It's just understanding what our position brings and the attitude that you have to bring to it, and um, and fighting through the nicks and bumps that that you get along the way. And obviously, there's certain things that that you can't play through and that that go really wrong. But um, for the most part, yeah, you just gotta kind of bite the bullet and go. I can relate playing through these hand cramps right now, <laughs> holding up. Uh, I was gonna ask, just building on that. I, is there something like, is there like a technique to like falling down like as an offensive <laughs> lineman? Because I seriously, every time you guys like if there's you know run into the middle and then all of a sudden bodies are falling, knees are going left and right. I'm always like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Geez. So the only the advice that I've always gotten and and kind of the way you have to do it if you ever feel pressure uh -huh. around feet, ankles, knees, whatever, uh -huh. the trick is to just go limp. Okay. Because. Um, if you ever feel pressure, you just let go because the, the way the injury happens is if you're stuck in the ground and your knee's not giving out. So if you just give in to the pressure, you got a better chance. Okay. Um, not guaranteed success rate, but that's kind of how the vets that I was around early kind of always taught me. Good to know. How about uh, types of edge rushers? I mean, this league's every week there's somebody premier. Brian Burns is big, big time. The other kid from Penn State's a bigger bodied guy. Would you rather go up against the guy with the lightning first step where you just, he's going to challenge you to get out of your stance correctly? Or would you rather go for the bigger, would you rather block the bigger bodied guy, the 280, 290 guy who's, you're going to maybe have to, he's going to bull rush a little bit more and you're going to have to anchor? Well, I don't think there's a specific type that you like going up against either way. Um, it all depends on the skill level of the guy across from you um, and how they use those traits that they were born with or um, to their advantage. And um, I don't think there's a specific uh, type of body or rusher that I would prefer either way. If a guy's a good rusher, he's a good rusher, and you can identify, try to how to, how to beat him um, just by watching tape. And the cut-ups, do you... Like, like, do will you take a Brian Burns cut up film and and pour through it in the evening, or is that you try to leave your work here and at when you get home and you're like, you know what, I'll rather watch Netflix. No, that doesn't happen. Not at this level. Um, you, you never, your mind's really never off of it. Um, even most of the time in the season, if I do put on Netflix, it's 
much of background noise while I'm watching tape. So um, it's it's nice that I play in the era in which I do, and that you can take your work home with you, so you don't feel as though you're abandoning, you know, my fiance or um, other people, their wives and kids. Um, but no, you're you're constantly watching film, and whether it's practice from the from that day and watching yourself, or just watching, you know, um, what the guy across from you is going to do that that week. Um, yeah, you're watching. I'm watching film from sunup to sundown. Yeah. So it really is like that because I, I mean, as an outside perspective, I always like to think, oh, they're just BSing. Like, you know, oh, it's okay if I watch Netflix for four hours. Oh, there's no way these guys actually are just watching tape around the clock. So it really is like that. Like, you just have yeah. To I mean, be- you take breaks to eat and talk and check in with your fiance or girlfriend or wife or anything like that. Obviously, it's not like suffocatingly sure. around, but um, yeah, yeah, you, you have to because everybody's a pro and everybody's watching everything and and um you can't leave a stone unturned with the guys that are as good as they are what's essential to your prep because i mean I know you guys have meetings forster's got talking points uh you've got cut up films but what like if you had a real time crunch what's what do you view as the essential part of your prep every week where you just you can cut other things out maybe but you cannot cut this out um, I don't think there's anything that you can really cut out because I, the way I've always done it and the way I've had success is by the routine that you get in. Um, it's just having your time frame, having your ability to, you know, check your boxes each way and, and stay within, you know, your framework of, of how you work. And whether it's Wednesday, it's, you know, base, base down and distance and, and seeing how they play in the run game or Thursday night, it gets a little bit more pass heavy because third down goes in. Um, those are the kind of things that you there's no there's no just leaving something free because of time crunch you make time you know that's what our job is after Debo uh, broke Jalen's ankles there I saw you running down on a little Twitter video said something to him and he pushed you away care, care to share not at all that's gonna stay on the white lines yeah it was just uh you know it was a fun moment um Debo's an unbelievable player it set it set the tone for the rest of the game and you know just saying something on the battlefield that's all it is how does Burns look to you on film? Um, he's a great player. You know, he's, he's very multiple in how he rushes. He's got a lot of athleticism. He's a big, long guy. Um, I haven't gotten all the way into it yet, but he's a, he's a great guy, a great player, and um, he's had a lot of success in this league for, for a reason. And so um, he's going to be a big challenge for us um, and, and certainly for the tackles, but, um, you know, just work as we always do and, and uh, identify the best way to block them, and that's, uh, that's all you can do. Yeah, thanks for the time. Yep. Be sure to join us today and tell all of your friends who are Bay Area sports fans where we are at. Join us for our post-game live streams on YouTube, and jump in the chat.